All right, what's up YouTube? Welcome to today's video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about something that's very interesting and very special, okay? Uh, so first of all, I think the first time I came across um, a certain kind of images that looked, you know, it was George Mayer on Instagram. I'll put a link in the description to his Instagram below. And, you know, I came across some of his images and they stood out for me because they were lit in a very, very different kind of way in the sense that I could, how, how do I put it now? Like light was very very well controlled you know and then i was really obsessed with this style of images you know i also saw something similar with Lindsay adler and you know some other really really good um, photographers as well and you know i thought to myself how did these people create these images you know and then you know after doing a couple of researches and you know watching some of the behind the scenes of Lindsay adler and judd mayer we found out that okay these images were created with optical snoots and uh I was like, okay, let's buy optical students then, you know, and create these images as well. But I faced kind of like a problem, you know, because optical students are, I like to call them like precision equipments. You know, you put light somewhere, you can create shapes and make it look exactly the way you want the light to look, okay? And the major problem I faced when I started working with, you know, the first set of optical students that I bought was that, you know, First of all, they were killing my light, so I would use them with my flash, either my 8400 or 8600, and I would lose a lot of light, so, you know, it would be hard for it to compete with the other strobes in the background, and I couldn't even use them with continuous lights either because they were also killing the amount of light that was coming out. I know that Lindsay Adler has one um, that she made, I don't know if it's with Adoroma or with one particular brand, and uh, they collaborated to make that. I, I have not had the opportunity to use that before, but... Um, I was lucky enough to get sent this amazing piece of equipment from Manlight. Okay guys, so uh, I want to give four points to explain why this is my absolute favorite piece of equipment at the moment. Um, it got to a point, photography became kind of like monotonous, okay, you put your light like this, you do this, and then, you know, it just became boring. Uh, with this equipment, it really makes things more interesting, like, the possibilities become endless. Um, but the first problem that this solved for me was the amount of light. Uh, like I said earlier, I had problems with the other optical stones that I had used because I was losing light, um, losing the amount of my the output of light I was getting. So I couldn't really use them in conjunction with like my strobes or you know my other powerful lights. But this solved that problem because with this non-light projection mount, you actually get more out of your lights in terms of like it's like putting light through a magnifying glass. So when you put light through it, you get more output at the end of at you know at the end of the day. Um, the second reason why I absolutely would recommend this and I absolutely love it at the moment is just the sheer amount of gobos or different shapes that are available to you. So uh, there's a plethora of different kinds of shapes that you can use to experiment with you know your images to create different patterns you know that look different when they are sharp and in focus and when they look different as well when they are out of focus now the third reason why i absolutely recommend this as well is the fact that the edges of the light now the edges of the light look really really sharp uh, one of the other problems i had with some of the optical students i used was that the edges um sort of like had this fringing they will have some weird color cast you know i couldn't really use them on my subject's face because all of this pose like a problem but with this the edges are stuck sharp and you know they look really really good you know lastly i just want to close with this point is that when i'm creating images or creating my portraits uh the main thing that comes to mind is how do i make this two-dimensional image look three-dimensional you know because at the end of the day you know pictures are flat uh, but you really really want to make them look three-dimensional you know to your subject you want to play tricks on them to make the images look like they have a lot of depth and this piece of equipment you know absolutely fulfills that for me it could be just using it on the subject's face to put lights in a certain area and not it could be um pointing it to the background you know to make the background look more interesting you know it could be just putting it in one small corner of the frame of your picture but 
whichever way you choose to use this equipment it has a lot of value a lot of you know visual power to your images which is why i absolutely love it and i you know i don't, I don't know every time i have a shirt i just put it on standby because you know what i always want to use it uh let me know in the comment section below if you've had any experience using other products other optical snoots what are the challenges that you have faced if you have any questions regarding this particular product i'll be happy to answer in the comment section below thank you guys for watching and see you in the next one cheers Thank <laughs> you.